According to research, in the last five years, SMEs in Nigeria have contributed 48% to national gross domestic product, that's the GDP. Employing over 60 million Nigerians, which shows the importance played by the retail economy in the country. Join us now on the studio is a member of the Tinumbu Shetima team, Asuko Ekpayong. He will be speaking on the plan to further grow the sector, address the challenges and limitations in that sector. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good you morning. can join the conversation on 081-270-53687-091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. We're pleased to have you in the studio. And um, I was opportunity to be at the event on Tuesday where uh, your candidate and his team were discussing the various um, angles of our, of our economy and what we're going to do. And I observed that one of the MDs there talked about this issue of the fluctuating of the forex. Um, they were very worried, the fact that we're having issues concerning that fluctuation. And SMEs can't grow when they're constantly having to deal with that. What does your administration plan to do concerning that crucial issue of forex fluctuations? Thank you very much. Um, that's a very great question. And I think... Um, for us to really deal with that, we need to take um, stock as to where we are and how we got here. I mean, globally, over the last uh, 24 months, the world has experienced very serious shocks, global shocks. We had uh, the cor coronavirus pandemic, first pandemic of this magnitude in over a century. We also have a war in Europe, Europe which serves as a bridge for um, trade and international business is currently um, at war in terms of the war between Russia and Ukraine. These shocks have greatly affected the global economy. Um, and this has affected the Nigerian economy and, of course, our currency. But it's important to also note, and if you come back, come home locally, um, the fluctuation in the currency or the fall of the Naira, the weakening of the Naira, um, I think is strictly it's not far-fetched. When you look at it, it's a negative balance of trade. Um, Nigeria imports almost everything. And uh, what it exports, there's little processing that is done to it. I mean, one of our greatest exports is crude, but then we turn around and import the refined products. A way to strengthen the Naira is for import substitution. A tenable Shetima administration will aggressively grow the small and medium enterprise to ensure that daily household goods that are consumed can be produced locally in Nigeria. It will do this by ramping up um, gas to power um, for production and manufacturing in the, in the um, local industry, catapulting industrialization. Also, another issue with the currency run is also that of speculation, a run on the currency, which um, is usually done by a lack of investors' confidence in the markets. The Tinubu Shetima administration will ensure that it signals the global economy and the global investors to take a position that is long-term for the Naira, mm -hmm. strengthening the Naira. Um, to bring that you know, home, the Tinubu Shetima administration within a year will look to unify the FX markets, creating a transparent foreign exchange market that is accessible by all, and it will, over a period of time, ensure it can depreciate the foreign exchange band by strategic interventions in the market. Okay, yeah. So SMEs is something that we discuss, you know, for <clears throat> a lot here on this table, and we've called many experts, you know, on it. And one of the things that, you know, we discuss often is taxation. <clears throat> we talk about trying to make sure that we widen our tax net, and then there's this huge informal sector largely SMEs, and where the government says, oh, we don't get enough tax from them, they can say to you locally, we're paying taxes to different, you know, the local governments, different fines here and there. What do you think this administration would do? I mean, what do you have to tell us about uh, the plans this administration has for mopping up, you know, streamlining the tax collection and also... <clears throat> So, yeah, you streamline the tax collection from the SMEs and um, widen the tax net for taxation um, at the federal level. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I think um, 
we are here in the home of, um, I would call it efficient taxation, that's Lagos State. Um, almost all sub-national governments come home to Lagos for peer learning when it comes to tax administration. Mm -hmm. And that is because um, when I see Waju Tinubu was governor of Lagos State, he improved the tax collection, creating efficiencies in collection without necessarily spreading or increasing the tax per person. What, what they focused on was increasing efficiencies in collection, ensuring that you know, the deployment of technology and innovation for collection, ensuring that those who should pay tax, pay tax and the right tax, but not overburdening sin single entities with overtaxation. That is what a tenable led administration will be looking to do nationwide. Expand the tax net, but reduce the tax burden on specific individuals, thereby increasing revenue to the coffers of the Treasury. Let's stop. I want to still stay with SMEs. Um, no country is going to grow. Nigeria currently contributes, SMEs contribute 84% of employment. Yes, that is correct. And about 48% of the GDP. GDP, absolutely. But we have a current administration that hasn't really, that uses words to support um, their so you, the lip service in support of SMEs, yeah. and we heard these promises. So you know, in that space where we hear promises, I'm wondering, like, is, is it workable? What, would, what you're doing for SMEs to increase profitability for them so that they will continue to increase their, their employment Scale rates? Scale up, yeah. Yes. Okay. What, in practical terms, how can you do it? Okay. Because you just said some things now, and I'm wondering, with the accounts that we're saying, you know, the government account that is already in deficit, how would the new administration suddenly be able to make these things happen? Okay, so I think your question is in two parts, but let me deal with the first part, which has to do with um, how do we strengthen the SMEs to scale. Mm -hmm. I think the primary challenge of the small and medium enterprise is uh, access to adequately priced capital. Without money, you can't even start up. Without capital, you can't grow, you can't scale. And um, what a Tinubu-led administration will immediately seek to do would be to partner with the financial institutions in the country the relevant regulatory agencies to ensure that adequately priced capital is readily available for deserving SMEs. Everything is about the process. Life or business is about process, 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 including mm -hmm. um, regulation and ensuring that who gets what when is very important. A tenable led administration will ensure that that capital is available for deserving SMEs to start up. Beyond that, you also have a lot of... Um, deficits in the area of infrastructure. Uh, like I said on Tuesday, um, a tenable led administration will ensure that it strengthens the regulatory framework for PPP. It would also seek alternative mm. financing models to ensure it can attract the right investment to bridge the infrastructure gap. The infrastructure gap is very important for SMEs because uh, without transportation infrastructure, such as road networks, mm. railways, uh, the ports, you can't get your goods and services from point A to point B. Sure. So we need to close that gap. Without power and gas, gas power, you can't produce or you cannot industrialize a nation. So a tenable led administration will be looking to bridge the gap in terms of infrastructure in power and infrastructure in transportation. Okay, so and sorry, please, just, and that will help SMEs generate an even bigger profit margin, enable them to continue to scale enable them to employ more people, produce more, and even export, mm. that will grow the economy. So certain costs continue to impede them, you know, SMEs from scaling. If you look at the <laughs> formula of subsidizing petroleum products here, as against what is done in Kenya, for instance, you see that we, we flipped it mm. the wrong side. So in Kenya, for instance, what the majority of people consume, which is kerosene and diesel, are subsidized, and petrol is left deregulated, what is the other way around here? What exactly would you do? Because these costs are part of production and any SME that will grow would continue to bear this cost. So what exactly would you, would this administration do that you're talking about now? Would, what would they do when it comes to subsidy? Would they continue this model? Do they have a removal, what total removal <coughs> do they think of? Are they considering subsidizing this particular, you know, important uh, I'll, give, I'll give you the business? shortest answer you will hear today. Um, a tenable led administration will remove the subsidization of oil, petroleum products. All, completely. all products. Yes, it would. 
So how for would, petroleum products? Have you considered because how that, that would affect? actually subsidizes the well off. I'm sure most of us on this table, and um, Madam, you were there on Tuesday. Tinubu gave a very perfect example. He says he has maybe six cars. The subsidy affects him more in terms of the benefits as opposed to the average Joe on the streets who actually are supposed to be subsidized. So a petroleum subsidy doesn't really, the, the numbers are there, the data is there, it doesn't really leave the least well-off people better off. And so it's important that it's removed. There is no <coughs> ifs or buts about that. It's, uh, the administration is dedicated to the company. But the co I want co particular consideration on MSMEs. We and talked about how they're contributing 48%. We can get it to 90 we can get it to 80 if we do something so that, deliberate so about it. What that, is that, that, that is why I spoke about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking to move to gas-powered electricity, uh, ramping up electricity transmission. The problem with the power sector, um, there is an installed generating capacity of about 13,000 megawatts, mm -hmm. but the transmission capabilities is 5,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. uh, Tinubu, a Shetima administration, will focus on investing aggressively in transmission capabilities to evacuate that excess 8,000 megawatts that is not transmitted. And with um, cost-reflective tariffs, gas-powered generation can be possible and that will drive down the production cost for SMEs. When you also invest in infrastructure, you reduce the overheads of moving goods and services from point A to point B. So that is the way we can tackle and strengthen the SME sector to grow. Still discussing with Asukwe Peyong um, from the Tinubu Shetimura campaign team. My question is, not, is, is more about getting people to do the right thing. It's one thing to have the nice policy and have the right intentions, like governor. We've seen during Jonathan's period where he created Ewing, and Ewing was able to give young entrepreneurs money to start up. They found that they'll collect the money, but they didn't go to do, they didn't, they didn't, they, didn't, they used it for personal means. Someone they used the money to travel, Jackpot. to Jackpot, to buy stuff for them personal. They didn't use it. And then we saw in the Buhari administration, there is the Ankers borrowers, where they gave farmers money to expand their businesses, hoping that they, they, they know buy from them and give it to Nigerian uh, contractors. Many of those farmers didn't pay back. Mm -hmm. So the policy, the intention was great, but we didn't get the effect of these great policies because the people, we the people, did not do the right thing. So <coughs> how does your administration hope with these new policies that sound great, get people to actually oil the system by doing what they must do, playing their own part mm. in this? Okay. Um, that's a tricky question because you're talking about humanity, right? Yeah. Mm. But if I was to be academic in my answer and with my own knowledge, the, um, there's always moral hazard in everything. Um, in, in finance and in lending, the moral hazard is that you give a man a loan, he takes it and goes to play a calo calo, you know, <laughs> put it on a bet because mm -hmm. the outcomes are extreme. And if he wins, mm, if he doesn't, if it's not collateralized, he runs away. Um, you have to have what I, la I would like to term incentive compatible contracts. That is, you have to tie doing the right thing to be in that person's best interest. Okay. And that's what you do in lending. You, you, know, you ensure that, look, if you don't pay this, right, you don't have access to future loans, you are <coughs> almost excommunicated, you know, excluded from future loans, and there's also some penalties and things that you would have to pay. So, for instance, if you given a, um, a grant um, to in, for innovation, you know, for, for an SME to start up, you, you have to tie it in a way. First of all, the screening process is very important. The selection process, you have to identify, you have to put, like I said earlier, process, process, process. You have to put processes in place mm. to ensure that you pick the right and deserving people. But beyond that, you have to put a structure in place that ensures that it is, that person is incentivized to channel those funds towards the purpose that it was given. And those can be, those can be architectures can be created to mm. safeguard those. Yeah, so still on policies, um, Mariah took it on the we the people side, but we have to look at it on government side. We've had many policies that would say sometimes inconsistent. Today you have policy that is um, supporting a particular business. SMEs especially, mop up monies, you know, from wherever they can put into a certain business in a couple of years, policies change, you know, and 
these are, you know, this is one of the things that affect SMEs and they do not have trust in a system on administration. What are the plans that this coming, um, this administration, the Tinubu Shetima administration is going to do concerning policies to gain trust of the SMEs in putting their monies into the system and doing business in the system? Thank you very much. Um, on Tuesday, I think um, Asiwaju Tinubu started the conversation by saying, this is a dialogue. It's a town hall because we want to hear from you so that we can get better. We want you to hear from us so that you know our plans. Um, he stated something beyond that. He said that this would be a continuous process. Dialogue is very important between the people and the government. It's important for, for you to know where the shoe pinches and for you to create policies that resolve those issues because um, nobody knows better than the wearer of the shoe. So an important mechanism for developing policies to resolve issues is continuous dialogue. Not one-off, not just before um, an election, but a continuous process. And if you look at uh, the calendar of activities for the campaign team, you see that there are a lot of town halls dotted across all geographical zones <coughs> of the country. And that is to get a feel, get a pulse. And I believe it's something that is going to be a continuous process. And whenever I speak about um, Asiwaju Tinubu, I like to come back to Lagos and see what was done in Lagos. What is the Lagos State Government style? And you see that the Lagos State Government has a style of continuous dialogue and town halls, not just before elections, but during the course of the administration. Right. Okay, so I love that, you know, you keep bringing it, the examples back to Lagos, but when we see Nigeria, Nigeria is much more than mm, Lagos. Let's absolutely. take example with the diversification into agriculture by the Buhari. Sorry, my reason for doing that is track record. No, I, the, I, I totally that's understand. That's where the leader has served. I completely as understand. Okay. So this question is not to attack that. It's okay. just to, you know, to see in broader perspective what this kind of policies or what problems they can have nationally. So, uh, for instance, the agriculture, the diversion into agriculture by President Muhammadu Buhari's administration is laudable. If you look at what he's been able to achieve across board, but the setbacks every time is security. So, for every 10 steps taken, 10 steps backwards when it comes to security. For instance, rice farming and all of that, they had, you know, they had results. But then, insecurity now flood. What yeah. exactly would you say the, that, you know, the um, Tinubu Shetima administration will do if they get in power nationally for farmers, for instance? You know, and how will they <coughs> take care of these issues that, you know, drew um, Buhari's administration backwards? Thank you very much. Um, I think one of the ways to further strengthen our farmers uh, would be the introduction of um, regional commodity exchanges. Um, they can serve as silos. They can um, concurrently run a warehouse receipting system. This will give farmers in rural areas and regional areas better value for money in terms of their commodities, in terms of getting their commodities from the farm to the markets. Uh, beyond that, when you talk about the farmers and the insecurity that, um, you know, we need to get the farmers back to the farm, and that is by uh, providing better security. And... Um, I said this yesterday on, on the show. I said um, security is three things, and the administration has articulated it and is resolved to provide those things. And that is people, ensuring that uh, under people, you know, recruiting people into the service, into the security services. Um, the second issue is on equipment. And uh, on that, the administration is resolved to provide the best equipment from tactical gear to aerial surveillance, to ground surveillance, to monitor, track uh, insurgents and uh, the agents of insecurity. But beyond that, skills acquisition for our military personnel to be able to engage and resolve issues of insecurity. So I wanted to go into, <coughs> this is a women, <laughs> well, a women's show, you know, <laughs> and it would just not... Very outnumbered. <laughs> yes. It would just not be right for us not to talk about the gender... Um, aspect of this at the campaign, what is the plan concerning, um, what's the gender plan for the new, for the campaign going on? Um, I think to answer that, I'm not just going to give you some policy statement. I mean, I may come back to that, but I'd like to just cast your mind back to Tuesday um, during the town hall 
apart from the four women I counted. Yeah, but apart from the two candidates on the table on the Q and A panel, the presidential candidate and the vice presidential candidate, there were nine other people, yeah. four ladies, yeah. five guys. As a matter of fact, you know, you can add a point five to the ladies <laughs> because they were more eloquent and more graceful than all Aww. five of us combined. So when you look at that, that's half, that's 50% representation. But I can assure you from the policy and from, you know, the track record, as well as Tinubu, Shatima led administration will ensure a minimum of 35%. But you can see they are beating that already, 50%. And I don't think there's any other candidate that is anywhere near that ballpark figure. Okay, we have to wrap up with you. But um, there are people out there who are trying to understand um, your candidate. You know, many of them hear about his track record in Lagos and what people have said, good and the bad. You worked with him or you're working with him. Could you, in your own personal view, tell us about him, about the vice president, your own personal view about their, their, their work ethics, the kind of people they are, just to sell your candidate to us. Okay. When Nigeria is now, it needs a leader that has a grasp and an understanding. Doesn't claim to understand everything, but a little about everything. Someone who's a hard worker, has a very hard work ethic, is willing to work 16 hours a day. Someone that has superiority of ideas. Someone who can delegate and get things done, someone who can execute. In the leader at Siwaju Tinebu, we have that. The track record speaks for itself. And um, he spots talent. He can identify talent and identify people with the intellect, identify people with the drive, the energy to get things done. And that is what Nigeria needs. It needs sincerity of purpose, superiority of ideas, and the energy to implement them. Thank you very much. We wish you, you the best and good luck. Mm -hmm.